So I joined the agency in 2005, uh, first doing R&D activities in the field of space uh, telecommunications. And uh, then I evolved within the agency. And now I am the payload and system manager of a, a small uh, but very interesting um, telecommunication mission, which is SATIS. And uh, there we are observing uh, from a low Earth orbit uh, ships uh, within uh, the immensity of the ocean, uh, because satellites are actually the only way where we can actually detect those ships. So uh, we use uh, very small satellites, what we call microsatellites, which are not the huge satellites that we are used to see in, uh, in the media. They are very small ones, relatively cheap to launch, and they allow us nevertheless to detect uh, the beacons that uh, most of the ships are equipped with. And this allows to survey uh, uh, the, the activity of the ships uh, in the oceans to detect if there are any illegal activities going on, if uh, uh, the ships behave correctly with respect to uh, the environment, for example, or we just uh, can track also the, how the merchandise go from one place to the other. So that is uh, the SATIS program in which I'm very happy to be, uh, to be actively participating. I think what brings more satisfaction is the knowledge that you have managed to do things that is useful, that are useful for, for people. So in my case, what would bring enormous satisfaction is that if, uh, when we get to launch the satellites that we are now uh, building with the industry, and if they work, and if the data is there, and people find the data useful, and uh, it improves uh, the quality of life and the understanding of uh, uh, how, in this case, uh, uh, merchandise are traveling across the world. For me, that is the most rewarding, the knowing that uh, what I do is also for the benefit of everybody, not for the benefit of a small elite or a, a very few people, but actually for, for all the citizens of, uh, of Europe. You don't need to be born with very special or you don't qualities, or you don't need to be uh, extremely gifted. It's through hard work, through uh, uh, let's say the little things that you do every day that you can achieve to have a brilliant career. I would say in almost all the fields, and most definitely in the space sector. For me, this has never been a, a difficult challenge to to overcome because I also find that most of uh, male working in this environment do have the open, openness of mind to understand that uh, other people, or either fail, male or female, may uh, think in a different way or may work in a different way. But I think it is important that uh, we uh, still emphasize the importance of diversity in the workplace, and that diversity includes gender diversity. So I think uh, we have also to look at these uh, uh, pre-cooked uh, ideas uh, of what women should or should not be and uh, just make our own mind of what we shall or shall not be or we may want or want not be. And if what you want is to have an exciting career and to be able to contribute to the, uh, to the benefit of, uh, of the citizens and if what you want is to actually uh, be fulfilled by the work that you do, I think uh, a space career is a very good choice for you. As uh, there are, It's not the only choice, but it, has, it is a very good choice. The space career, it is not a single space career. There are many space careers. You can have a space career in science and engineering, which is the classical one. You could have a space career also in communications, if uh, that is uh, your vocation. So first, what you need to find out is what you really like to do. And on a daily basis, do you like to read? Do you like to talk? Do you like to communicate with other people? Do you like to paint or to write? First, you have to discover what is inside you. What is that really you like to do when nobody else tells you what you have to do? That is the first step that any teenager has to think internally, what they really want to do. Not because the media tells you so, not because it's what is expected from you, but it really needs to come from inside. And that, I think, is the most difficult exercise, to know who you are, really. 
one of the aspects of having a space career is that uh, you get to live in very different countries. Uh, you will not likely have a space career without having traveling and lived in at least two or three countries. In my case, I live, of course, I was born and raised in, in Spain, then I moved to France, and, and then I, I live here in the Netherlands since I joined the agency. This is very exciting in the sense that you get to meet people uh, from all over the world, in here in ESA, from all over Europe. Um, that gives a great diversity in your friends. You get to know things that you wouldn't uh, get to know if you hadn't this diverse set of friends, from uh, cooking to uh, di different kind of hobbies or sports. And uh, that is very good living in, in an international environment like we do here in the European Space Agency to, to get access to, to such a diverse uh, group of people that are also motivated and excited like you for space, but also know and want to do other things. For example, here I discovered diving. Uh, I become a, a diver after joining, joining the agency and uh, that actually is is very much linked to my desire to understand better the universe because the underwater universe is as different as it can be from uh, the universe that we are used to see in our daily lives.